Right, this module is uh, is a review of continuous time Fourier series, uh, sort of Fourier series representation of continuous time periodic signals. So this is something that we've covered in class already. Uh, nevertheless, um, I'm going to try to give you a quick review. So let's consider um, a periodic signal, uh, which is x of t, uh, and it's periodic with a period of t. So that means that x of t equals x of t plus capital T, where capital T is the period. Um, and this condition is satisfied, of course, for all um, t belonging to the real set. And as I said earlier, capital T is what that capital T is the period. And corresponding to this period, there's a, there's a frequency uh, in radians per second. So this is omega naught, uh, which is 2 pi uh, divided by t. Now, Fourier series uh, representation, um, if it exists, um, then uh, x of t, according to Fourier, can be represented as a superposition of complex periodic exponentials. Um, and mathematically, what that means is that x of t uh, can be written as, um, x of t can be written as summation, k going from minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, a sub k's, e raised to pi j, k, Mega naught t. So this is um, the Fourier series representation of continuous time periodic signals, where a sub k's, a sub k's, if you recall, are the Fourier series coefficients. Uh, that's what we call them, uh, series coefficients. And they're sometimes also referred to as um, spectral coefficients. So a sub k is actually a complex number um, that, that represents the, the contribution that the complex exponential uh, e raised to pi j q omega naught t has um, in making up the periodic signal x of t. Now, uh, and I, mean, I just want to clarify here that, that uh, the Fourier series is represented when I keep on saying if it exists, so um, that means there are periodic signals whose Fourier series representation does not exist. However, most of the practical signals that we're gonna come across uh, in this course um, do satisfy some conditions, um, and those are called Dirichlet conditions. Uh, and if they do, uh, their Fourier series representation is going to exist. And we're gonna be only dealing with those signals um, in this class. Now, um, uh, just to give you a quick re uh, review of how uh, these coefficients A sub k or the, the spectral coefficients are determined, um, that those are determined through the analysis equation. And for your review, um, I'm going to derive how those uh, coefficients can be determined uh, from, uh, from X of D. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right. So, what we're going to do next is, is um, so how do you determine determining the uh, Fourier series uh, coefficients? That's what we're going to do next. Okay, so the way we're going to go about this is, um, and exactly what we did in class is I'm gonna take x of t, okay? I'm gonna take x of t, and let me multiply that with e raised to part minus j n omega naught t with for some integer n. And I am going to integrate that from zero to capital T, where capital T is the, uh, is the period for this, uh, for this periodic signal. And let's just try to evaluate what this integral is gonna turn out to be. And in order to evaluate this, let me just plug in this representation, which is a Fourier series decomposition, into uh, this, this thing over here, right? So, um, so if this is equation one, let me just plug in equation one uh, over here, over here, and what I get is this is, integral from zero to t. And then set of x of t, I have 
the summation k equals minus infinity to plus infinity a sub k's um, e raised to power j k omega naught t uh, times e raised to power minus j n omega naught t uh, dt. So if you just um, just recall, uh, so this thing here is really this thing here is x of t. Right. So let's just uh, move forward. Um, so what does this turn out to be equal to? So this is equal to the summation can come out. The summation can come out of the integral. Uh, so this is summation k going from minus infinity to infinity. So can the coefficients a sub k's because they're not a function of time. And what you have is this integral from zero to t, um, e raised to part j and I'm going to take out omega naught t as a common factor outside. And this is what we get, right? Um, Given this, um, what we do ne need to ne do next is try to try to figure out what this integral is going to be, right? So that's going to be our next job, right? So um, so if I just try to evaluate what this integral, that's what I'm going to do over here. Okay. So let me. Uh, Call this as equation number two. Um, and let me try to evaluate this integral here. So this is integral from zero to t. Here is the part j k minus n omega naught t dt. Right, so I'm going to evaluate this integral for two cases. Uh, the first case is going to be when k equals n. And we can remember k is an integer, n is an integer as well, right? So when k equals n, so this is to equal to integral from zero to t. And this, when 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 k equals n, this is just zero. So this is e, this is just e raised to power zero, which is just one. So this is just one times dt, and this of course is t. Mind you, this is only for the case when, when k equals n, right? What happens when k is not equal to n? So that's more interesting. Um, so for the case when k is not equal to n, so this is when, when k is not equal to n. So this is integral, so that's something, okay. Um, So this is equal to, if that integral is equal to e raised by j, k minus n omega naught t divided by, divided by j, k minus n omega naught. And this integral needs to be evaluated um, from t to zero, right? And so therefore, this is equal to e raised to power j k minus n times omega naught times capital T minus e raised to power zero, which is just one divided by j times k minus n times omega naught. And here, something interesting happens. Um, so what you observe, what you're going to observe is that omega naught t is what? This is omega naught is 2 pi by t times t, so this is just 2 pi. And therefore, this implies that e raised to pi j k minus n omega naught t, that's just equal to 1, right? And therefore, therefore, this, this is 1, this is 1, so therefore, this whole term turns out to be equal to zero. Right? Whenever k is not equal to n. Right? So if I just conclude what this integral is, um, so I, in conclusion, what I can say is that, that this integral, 
So in conclusion, in short, integral from zero to capital T, e raised to pi j k minus n mega naught t dt is equal to t when k is equal to n and is zero otherwise. Now this is um, a mathematical way of, of proving what this relationship is, um, but you can you, you, you can have an intuitive reasoning uh, for why this is true. And that, that should be fairly obvious to many of you. Um, so this is really a sinusoid, right? So this is a sinusoid in the complex, in the, in the real domain, and the sinusoid in the imaginary domain when k is not equal to n. And what you're doing is you're just finding the area under the curve of those sinusoids over one period from zero to capital T. And then we know for a fact that the area under the curve of a sinusoid is always um, is always zero. The exception, of course, is when k equals n, for, and for that case, the sinusoid uh, reduces to a DC signal, and the area under the curve for that DC signal, of course, is going to be the capital T, and that's why th this is true. That's the intuitive reason, right? Now, if if I um, um, take a so this is equation number three. This is equation number three. Um, and if I plug in, so plugging in uh, equation number three into two, where this this is what the 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 equation number two was, right? So what I see is that this thing here, this thing here, is going to be equal to capital T only when k equals n, right? And when k is not equal to n, this thing is gonna be equal to zero. And therefore, in this summation, there's actually only one term that's non-zero and that corresponds to k equals n. All of the other terms for all of the k's which are not equal to n, uh, each one, every one of those terms because of this thing here uh, reduces to a zero. Uh, another way of, another one of the ways I can try to justify that is that this thing here is actually t times delta k minus n, right? So if I plug it into equation number two, um, this is equation number two here. So uh, what we're then really saying is that this integral from zero to capital T, x of t e raised to power minus j n mega naught t, dt is equal to is equal to summation k going from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, summation infinity a sub k's times t times delta k minus n right and as far as the I mean what I just said is that this thing is equal to one, only when k equals n and zero otherwise, because of which I can easily conclude that this is actually equal to uh, t times a sub n for an integer n. And this implies that the coefficient a sub n for some integer n can be represented as one upon t, um, integral from zero to t, e raised to power, sorry, x of t times e raised to power minus j n mega naught t dt. Right, so this is, I mean, what we've actually done is we've gone through this exercise and we figured out what the relationship uh, for the Fourier series coefficient a sub n is, and I can just change n and determine each and every one of the coefficients, right? Now, another point, important point here is that this integral does not necessarily have to be zero from zero to t, right? If I go back through the entire uh, derivation up above, um, 
I'll find out that everything is going to hold true. I mean, this thing, this thing here is going to be equal to this thing, regardless of um, where this thing starts from, right? As long as this integral is over one time period, uh, irrespective of where the, the, the index starts here. So one of the ways we write this, if you recall, is that this is equal to one upon t integral, and we use a notation t here. And this just represents, this just represents that the, this just represents that the integral is over any period, and this period could be anywhere, right? So this is x of t e raised to the power minus j n omega bar t. Right. Okay. So, what is our conclusion now? So, conclusion. The conclusion that we have is that um, the remember the so in conclusion. The Fourier series decomposition. What that states is that the periodic signal x of t can be represented as this expression, k equals minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, a sub k is e raised to part j k omega naught t, where the Fourier series coefficients a sub k is can be found from this expression that I've derived up above, right? So, this is one upon t integral over any period t of what x of t times e raised from minus j k omega naught t dt. And this expression we call as the synthesis expression. Whereas this expression is called the analysis expression, right? So this is what Fourier series representation is. Right, so this is what the review for Fourier series decomposition was. Um, so in the next module, we're just going to discuss a few examples um, which make use of this, uh, this Fourier series representation.